today we're keeping it real simple y'all but we're not short on flavor i have three recipes to share and most of the ingredients you can find right in your pantry Hey y'all, I'm Jen, welcome or welcome back. In today's video, we're going into our church cookbooks again. I have a recipe at the end of this video y'all are not gonna wanna miss. There's an ingredient in there that I have actually never seen in a recipe before. So when I was flipping through my cookbook and I saw it, I was so intrigued and I knew I had to try it. Spoiler alert, it turns out wonderful. So stay tuned to see what that is. But before we get into that recipe, I also have two really simple, just everyday recipes. And I'm willing to bet you already have most of the ingredients. So let's go ahead and get cooking. Alrighty y'all, got an easy one for you today. I got my slow cooker out. I have some errands to run and my house to clean. So this is gonna do all the dinner work for me. So we're gonna start with two pounds of stew meat. I'm just gonna get this into the slow cooker. Next on top of that, we're gonna add one packet of brown gravy mix. And I actually ordered the low sodium version, but Walmart substituted for the regular, so we're just working with what we have. Dump that right on over top. Next, we're also gonna add in one of these packets of the beefy onion soup mix. We're gonna add one can of cream and mushroom. We want lots of gravy in there because when we get home, we're just gonna do some mashed potatoes, some fried okra, and dinner will be ready to go. This could not get any easier. This is a great recipe for to leave on while you're gone all day to work, or like I said, just cleaning your house or running errands. That way you have a big help with dinner. So I have my crock pot on low, and I'm just gonna let it cook anywhere from about six to eight hours. Alrighty y'all, our beef tips have been cooking all day. They look delicious, plenty of that gravy down there. And I just made up some quick mashed potatoes, AKA Bob Evans. Feel free to make your own if you so choose. But that's gonna be dinner and it's gonna be delicious. Some of those mashed potatoes. Let's get some of those yummy beef tips. And these were so easy. There you go, easy as that. Beef tips and mashed potatoes is what's for dinner tonight. Y'all give this one a try. All right, so tonight we're going to eat for my mom's birthday, for mama's birthday, right? Yeah. And she requested cherry cobbler for her birthday dessert. So that's what Hayden and I are making. And I know I've shared this recipe so many times, but I could not let a pantry recipe video go up without including this dessert. Because how many of us have some cake mixes in our pantry? And if you don't have cherry pie filling, chances are you have another fruit pie filling already in your pantry. But obviously we're gonna be doing cherry today. Whatever your favorite fruit is, or whatever's in your pantry, go with that. You cannot go wrong. Blueberry lemon? Blueberry lemon, yes. Blueberry lemon, I have a recipe for that. I'll link it here and link it down below. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get two or three cans of pie filling into a nine by 13. Like I said, we're going to a little party tonight, so we're just gonna do three cans just to make it stretch a little further, but two is perfectly fine. So while she's getting the last of that pie filling, I'm just gonna take two sticks of butter and melt this in the microwave. You can also get by with just one stick of butter if that's what you have, but trust me, if you have two, girl, use the two. It's gonna be so good. Spread it out evenly, good job. I know, how many times have we made this? Like, like a lot. Time. It's so good, right? So let's move that to the side. So we have our two sticks of melted butter. And all we're gonna do is add that one, back, one box of cake mix and we're gonna stir it up into that butter. So next, you're gonna have this consistency. It kinda resembles cookie dough. And all you're gonna do, this is the, well yeah, kinda like thick mashed potatoes. All you're gonna do is get it little pinches of it and just dribble it on with your hands. You gotta get messy for this one. So it's gonna take my bacon off. So as Hayden is doing, you just kinda go all over it until you use all of your cake mix, just little globs all over the top, and it's gonna make the most perfect cobbler crust. So good. We're gonna have some vanilla ice cream. I, I can't wait. Can, can you? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be so good. And then we're not gonna bake it yet, but we're gonna take it to Mama's, and then say so bake it 350. Bake it 350 for 30 minutes. For 30 minutes. Or until golden brown. Or until golden brown. And we're gonna serve it with ice cream. And we're gonna serve it with ice cream. Yes.
start by getting two tablespoons of butter melting in a large pot. And to that, I'm gonna go ahead and add about one cup of chopped onion and then one cup of chopped celery. We're just gonna let that butter melt down and we're gonna let that onion and celery saute for just a couple minutes. I'm gonna toss around that butter a little bit. And so if you're not new here, you've probably noticed me using these little utensils. And this video is not sponsored. I just wanted to tell y'all something I thought was a little bit funny. On one of my last videos, I was stirring up that beef stroganoff. I was stirring it in the skillet. And I had somebody comment and say, that is not a stirring utensil. Well, actually, this is called a spurtle, and it was designed and made to stir things. So it is a stirring utensil, but not only that, it's used for lots of different things. Like I said, y'all probably see me using it all the time. But these are called spurtles. I literally use them every single day. I think you can get them on Amazon. I'll find a link for y'all and put it below if you wanna check them out. But yes, if you're ever wondering what this weird looking thing is, I'm using, and also, let me grab this out of my drawer. This one as well. And then I have another one that's like the red one, but it's just a little bit skinnier. And that one's good for getting like peanut butter out of a jar and stuff like that. So that's what these are for. And I just got that one dirty. But also too, y'all, in this kitchen, I'm not worried about what kind of utensil is supposed to do what. I just use the utensil that I wanna use that gets the job done. Okay, comment below if you feel me on that. I mean, I'm not gonna use a whisk to try to chop bacon, but y'all know what I mean. Now we're just gonna dump in four cups of chicken broth. I have about four pounds of yellow golden potatoes, and I just scrubbed mine really good, and I like to leave the skin on these. It's super soft, and plus it just makes it real easy. So while that's coming up to a boil, I'm gonna go chop up my potatoes. All right, my broth is boiling, so now I'm just gonna bring over those potatoes and gently Put them into the pot. That's a lot of potatoes. All right, we're just gonna bring that back up to a bowl. Let them cook about 20 or 25 minutes until they get nice and tender. We'll go from there. I may add a little bit more broth. I've never made this recipe, so I'm not sure if I'll need to yet. But I'm gonna follow the recipe until I think I need to change something up. So let's get these potatoes tender. Alrighty, my potatoes are starting to get really soft. So now we're gonna add one can of the whole kernel Southwestern corn. It has poblano and red peppers in there. And I did drain that. And also we're gonna add one small can of green chilies. And I am not gonna drain that one. I'm gonna give that a nice stir. It's pretty thick, but we are gonna add some milk along with that odd ingredient, odd to me anyway, here in just a second. But I can always add a little milk or more broth if I need to. But for now, we're just gonna bring that back up to a bowl. So now I have about two cups of milk here in just a little bowl, and we're gonna whisk in one packet of this Pioneer Country Gravy Mix. Some of y'all probably have seen this recipe. I Googled it just to see if there was more recipes like this. And sure enough, there are. But I had never seen a recipe other than like biscuits and gravy or, you know, country fried chicken or something like that with a packet of gravy mix in it. So I saw it and I had to make it. I'm just gonna get this whisked up really well. All right, so next we're just gonna pour in that gravy and milk mixture. There we go, that definitely loosened it up. I'm glad I didn't add any more broth because this is looking like the perfect chowder consistency this is looking so good and so easy all right the last thing we're gonna add i have some fiesta cheese the recipe calls for me processed mexican cheese i'm not sure if they mean like a cojita cheese or i don't know what else that would be so i just went with the fiesta blend this is the eight ounce bag so i'm going to use about half this bag give it one more little stir I'll pop the lid on, let it sit about five more minutes, and it will be ready. And this is looking delicious. And super, super easy. All right, I plated up that chowder. I put a little bit of extra cheese on the top. It looks so good. We've all tried it. And we're actually having tacos tonight because I wasn't sure how the kids would like it. 
It's a perfect rainy night, perfect Tuesday for Taco Tuesday and a little Tex-Mex chowder. Really good. You can taste all the peppers in there. It doesn't taste like overly heavy either, which is really good. All right, y'all give this one a try. If you are loving easy recipes like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stick around because I post easy recipes every single week. I hope you guys enjoyed today's recipes. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see y'all real soon in the next one. Bye y'all.